Praise the Lord. Please join New Beginnings Community Church. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley Sr. Join us as we sing Bless That Wonderful Name. We do not own the right to sing this song, but join us anyway. tonight by the help of the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost. We have another lesson that is uh, directly for the church, for the body of Christ, for the born again believer, for the, for the Lord is uh, preparing us for his return as we await his appearing. He's given us his word. He is reminding us of his word and, and what he requires. He said he uh, desires mercy and not sacrifice. He requires mercy, not sacrifice, but obedience. Obedience to his word. So we have another uh, lesson, another great lesson tonight. And we're going to pray and we're going to get into it. So we thank God for you all taking the time out to join us tonight. We pray that you would find or you would hear something in the word tonight that would increase and encourage your faith. We're going to pray for bow heads. Be gracious to him, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. 
come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for being the Lord of our lives. We thank you for traveling mercies and grace, Lord God. We thank you for the pre your presence being with us, Lord God. We thank you for the comfort of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for a mind to assemble together to study of your word. We pray that you would move in this place tonight according to your will, according to our needs. Set upon each and every one of us. Give us the understanding that we need, that we may be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. We will praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Tonight, uh, this is going to be part one of a uh, two-part series. But tonight is part one. And part two is, uh, part two will will be to come. We won't say when, because we're not God, but <laughs> this is part one of two parts. So we'll get part one tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, in the, we're in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. And this is Paul, like I said, this is directly to the church. This is a charge to the, to the body of Christ to the born again believers. And we will be in the fifth chapter and we'll read verses 16 to verse 21. And I'll be reading King James Version only tonight. So I'm following whatever translation that you use. Galatians 5 and 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, misgivings, Verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Verse 21, uh, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I can say this one is, is this lesson tonight is directly to the church, directly to the born again believer, the called out, uh, the called out body of Christ, the bride. The Lord is preparing his bride. Paul said he presented us unto Christ a chaste virgin. So he's trying to present us unto Christ a chaste virgin. Our focus, our thought tonight says the flesh lusted after the spirit. Our focus verse is verse 17. And I'll read 17 and then we'll deal with it. Verse 17 says, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You have to understand that our flesh, your flesh and my flesh, it lusts against the spirit. And your Holy Ghost and my Holy Ghost, it lusted against the flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit, part one. Part two is the spirit lust against the flesh. That's soon to come. Uh, but that word flesh, as it pertains to this lesson, it's on it's the description is on your worksheet. It says human nature, the earthly nature of man, apart from divine influence, and therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. That's flesh. That's flesh. That's what we're dealing with in this lesson. 
That word lusted. It says to wish for, desire, to long for, intensely crave, passion, to delight, carnality. And so, uh, putting this lesson together, Paul is here dealing with the, with the church, the Colossian church, and he's letting them know that your flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost lusts against the flesh. It says, uh, and these are contrary the one to the other. In other words, your flesh and the Holy Ghost does not get along. <laughs> My flesh and the Holy Ghost does not agree, does not get along. The, the Bible says they lust against each other. And that word, lust, suggests to us that they wish for, or they desire, or they long for, or they intensely crave, or their passions are totally opposite. Mm -hmm. Totally opposite. And so, All right. Paul is telling the Galatians, the, the, the members of the body, the church, that we cannot, uh, we cannot live after the lust of the flesh because it opposes God. It opposes the Holy Ghost. It is not in agreement with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So when you and I are functioning, when we are operating in our flesh, we are not pleasing to God. We are opposing God. We are enemies of God. And as we read from 16 to verse 21, mm -hmm. uh, the Bible lets us know that when we are in the flesh, when we are in the flesh, when we are in uh, our human earthly nature, when we are in that, uh, we are not pleasing to God. We are not pleasing to God. And so we are always, we are always to operate. Verse 16 said, uh, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You and I are always to walk in the spirit. Now, the next lesson we'll deal with that. I'm not going to deal with that this lesson. This lesson is warning you and I uh, not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we have just read what uh, describes in verse 19, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. The works of the flesh are uh, sexual, they are moral, they are religion, religious. If you go down the list that we just read, you'll see the sexual sin, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, uncleanness, You'll see the religious sins, idolatry, witchcraft. These works of the flesh are broke up in several different categories. You'll see moral categories, uh, emulation, jealousy, all this type of stuff. You and I, as a born again believer, we cannot function or operate in that nature. That that lust against the spirit, those characteristics, they desire to run your life and my life. You got to hear what the spirit is saying. As a member of 
as a member of the body of Christ, we cannot function or operate under that, under those uh, spirits. We cannot do it because they lust against God. Mm -hmm. and, and those of us that believe that we can function and operate in the, in the manifestation or the works or the lust of the flesh, we are deceiving ourselves. We're deceiving ourselves. Paul is letting the church know. He said, look, the flesh lusts against the spirit. It lusts against the spirit. He said that, that ye cannot do the things that ye would do. He said these are, are con contrary one to the other. So the Lord is just getting us prepared. He's getting us ready for his return. Because I often say, I often quote the scripture that says when the Lord returns this time, he's returning apart from sin. The time to repent of your sin is now why we have grace and mercy. Because when the Lord returns, he's returning apart from sin. Now that you and I have grace, now that you and I have mercy, we can repent of the works of the flesh. Understand this is to the church. This is not to the sinner. Okay. This is to the church. So don't <laughs> don't be found with an evil heart of unbelief. If you or I are operating under the flesh, then we are lusting or we are contrary to the Spirit of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Let us get into the lesson. Let us get into the lesson. I, I just want to encourage you tonight to, to not, I just want to encourage you tonight, first of all, to get the Holy Ghost if you don't have it. And those of us that do have the Holy Ghost, I want to encourage you to walk in the Spirit. Stop allowing people to shame you because you are trying to obey or you're trying to live your life according to the Word of God. And because they don't desire to. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In the book of Genesis, in the beginning, the third chapter, the sixth verse. In the book of uh, Genesis, the third chapter, the sixth verse. Now, uh, before we read that, I want to read, I want to read the, the, uh, the three different types of lust that the flesh operates under from, from creation until this present day. And that is, number one, that is the lust of the flesh. That's what we're dealing with tonight. And that is physical desire. Like I said, sexual, religious, moral, uh, the lust of the eyes, that is personal desire, and the pride of life, that is self-interest, I mean, I'm sorry, self-interest. <laughs> These are the three manifestations that the flesh operates out of from creation until present day. And we're going and we're going to get a witness. We're going to go to creation to Genesis the 3rd chapter and verse 6. And it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to, to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, now the lesson tonight is a two-part lesson. <laughs> Part one is the flesh lust against the spirit. Immediately, Immediately, we see that happen from creation. Immediately. The spirit, in this case, 
being the word of God. You and you and I know, you and I know uh, what the Lord told Adam that of the trees of the garden they could freely eat, except for the two trees in the midst of the garden, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They couldn't eat from those two trees, but, but the rest of them they could eat from. Okay, the lesson tonight. We're trying to suggest to you that the, your flesh, my flesh, lusts against the spirit. It is not okay. <laughs> it is not okay to function and operate in the spirit. God accepts no man's person. I'm sorry, it's not okay to operate in the flesh. God accepts no man's person. None. And we cannot be, and we cannot think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. This is what the Bible teaches. We see, we see from creation that the flesh is already operating in lust. Uh, verse six says, "And when the woman saw, when the woman saw that lust of the, lust of the eyes, when the woman, I mean that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes." And a tree to be desired to make one wise, lust of the flesh, physical desire. Uh, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You see all the all you see all of it in in this one scripture. You see the pride of life. Right. You see the lust. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, you see the physical desires, the personal desires, and the self-interest. They want it to be, they want it to be wise. It, 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 scripture said a tree to be desired to make one wise. Pride of life, self-interest, the lust of the eyes, personal desire. They wanted it. <laughs> Satan, the serpent told him, you know, God, the Lord don't want y'all to eat that because then y'all would be, uh, y'all, you know, y'all would be like God. Got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Romans. Now let's get back into the church, just to, just for us to understand that the lust of the flesh has been operating from the beginning. Now let me pause right here and interject this again. If you are of the belief that you do not need the Holy Ghost. If you are of the belief that you do not need the Spirit of God, well then you have just answered your own question in what manner that you are operating. You are operating in the flesh. All right. You are operating in the flesh. Let's go back and read the description of the flesh on your worksheet. worksheet. Human nature the earthly nature of man, apart from divine influence. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, then you are separate or you are apart from divine influence. You're operating in your human nature, your earthly nature. All right. And that nature opposes God. God is not pleased with that nature. That is a sinful nature. That nature fell in creation, in the garden. Moving on. All right. Romans, the seventh chapter, 18th verse. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. <laughs> because your flesh is lusting against your spirit, and your spirit is lusting against your flesh. He said, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, in my human nature, in my earthly nature, mm -hmm. he said, dwelleth no good thing. That's a fallen nature. That's a sinful nature. That nature, without any uh, 
without any help, that nature all by itself opposes God. Without any influence, without anything. That nature by itself opposes God. He said, he said, for to will is present with me. He said, I desire, he said, I desire to do it. I desire to do it. He said, but have to perform that which is good. He said, I find not. <laughs> have you ever have you ever wanted to do the right thing, but you just keep seeing to doing the wrong thing? This is what the scriptures are letting us know that our flesh lusts against our spirit. And the things that we would do, we find we 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 cannot find how to perform that, how to do it, because of the lust in our flesh. What is lust? Lust is intense, intense things that we intend to crave. Lust is strong passions, is strong desires, and they are warring against the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is to lead and to guide us into all truth. But the flesh operates in lust in three characters, physical desire, personal desire, and self-interest. That is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Romans 7 chapter also, verse 22 to 23. It says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, spiritual man. 23. But I see another law in my members, in my flesh, in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, my flesh. You've got to understand, <laughs> you've got to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. We Paul, Paul is trying to help us. He's trying to help the body of Christ figure out uh, where the struggle is. A lot of times we wonder, why, why am I struggling? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? He's trying to point out to you and I, the struggle is in your members. It's in your flesh. It's in your human, your earthly nature. That's where your struggle is. It's not the person standing next to you. It's in your flesh. It's in my flesh. It's lusting against the Holy Spirit. This is where the struggle is. When I would do right, evil is always present. So you and I have to understand that we must walk in the Spirit. Now we're going to get to that in part two. But that is the remedy. That is the remedy. And that is to that is the remedy of the, the lustful, the, the lustful flesh is walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. As long, as long as you and I, if we do, if as long as you and I are not walking in the spirit, mm -hmm. then we will be overtaken by the flesh. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden. They were overtaken by the pride of, I'm sorry, by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And if you are one that likes to go to church to be entertained, and you like to hear that you got a Cadillac coming and a house coming, they they are talking to your flesh. All right. <laughs> They are appealing to your flesh. And your flesh is lusting against your spirit. They are keeping you and I in a carnality, in a carnal state of mind. They are appealing to your flesh. And there is no salvation in your flesh. Oh, you got to hear what the spirit is saying. Uh, Romans the eighth chapter. Let's go there because we got a lot. We got some reading to do. 
Romans the eighth chapter. Romans the eighth chapter. We're going to read at verse three down to verse eight. And let's read it with the understanding. Verse three says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. You and I cannot justify sinning in the flesh. Christ has condemned sin in the flesh. He nailed it to the cross. He nailed it. So you and I, when we sin, go back up to uh, the initial verses and, it, and where <laughs> where it listed the manifestation of the flesh. We cannot, we cannot justify operating in that character. Uh, because Christ has, verse 3 says, Christ has condemned sin in the flesh. So when we sin, it's very clear who's operating. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now we just dealt with the righteousness not too long ago. But here Paul is letting the Galatians know that the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us who walk uh, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if you want to be the righteousness we found that, I believe, last lesson. Then you have to walk in faith in the Son of God and not the flesh, not the law, not the flesh, not uh, verse 4. Let's keep going. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. I want you to pay attention to verse 6 through verse 8. For to be carnally minded is death. To be fleshly minded, to be naturally minded, to be fleshly minded, to be earthly minded is death. Stop letting people tell you, you, you so heavenly good. You ain't a, you so heavenly, heavenly bound. You know earthly good. Stop fooling with that. Verse 6 says, for to be fleshly minded, to be carnally minded is death. Walking dead. Don't let nobody make you feel bad because you're trying to live according to the word of God. He said, but to be, but to be spiritually minded is life. Uh, to be spiritually minded is, is life and peace. Verse 7. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8, here we go. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Listen. Uh, verse, verse 6. Verse 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death. Carnally minded carnally minded is a fleshly mind. It's an earthly mind. It's a sensual mind. It lusts against the spirit. Hear what the spirit is saying. You and I are never justified as born again believers. You and I are never justified functioning or manifesting in our carnal mind. Hear what the spirit is saying. That, that opposes God. Yeah. He said here, he said the carnal mind is to be carnally minded is death. And it seems like we become stronger and stronger and stronger in our carnal mind every day. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we just, uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's on this worksheet or not. I don't think it is. But since, <laughs> but since we in the book of Romans, uh, since we in the book of Romans, Let's go to uh, 
Is it verse 17? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong book. Oh, no, never mind. Let, let's not. Let's not. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. We're about that another day. <laughs> Galatians. Back back to the worksheet. Uh, Huh? Yeah, we're gonna go back to the worksheet. I uh, in the book of Galatians, back to back to Galatians, Galatians the sixth chapter, Galatians the sixth chapter, verse seven and eight. Now let's read it with understanding. Ah. Uh, Verse 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You're not going to reap, you're not going to reap eternal life sowing to the flesh. Stop falling for these false teachers that every time you go to church they tell you to give your rent money and your new house coming. And none, neither one of them going to save your soul. Because if you if you reap to the flesh you if you sow to the flesh you're going to of the flesh reap corruption. Corruption, corruption is ultimately decay. In other words, you remember when they spoke about Jesus and they said he didn't allow his Holy One to see corruption because he rose, he rose up, he was raised up. The worms, the, the, the dirt, the worms didn't decay his body. It didn't corrupt his body. That's what he's talking about ultimately. If we sow to the flesh, we're going to up the flesh reap corruption. That means we're going to, that means we're going to, our end is ruined. Mm -hmm. We have to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we cannot be so convinced to operate in, in the flesh, which is our human nature, that we think the Lord is pleased with that. He don't, the Lord don't want to see you and I. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So when the Lord looks down at you and I, he wants to see the image of his son. We are to be conformed to the image of his son. We have been redeemed. We have been uh, called out. We have been set aside. We have been done. We have all these things have been done to us by the atoning uh, death mm -hmm. and the propitiation of Jesus Christ, those of us that have been born again of water and spirit. There is no way that we think we can please God functioning in our human nature. After we just read where he nailed Sin to the cross, he condemned it. Yeah. Condemned it. So why do I see it? Why do you see it? Mm -hmm. And then we try to justify it. The only thing that you can do for sin, the only thing that I can do for sin <laughs> is confess and <laughs> repent. That's it. Don't justify it. Yeah. Acknowledge it. First, first John, first John says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And then we repent from it. We don't continue in it. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How can those of us that have uh, died to sin continue to live therein. Understand what the Spirit is saying. 
Stop falling for these uh, backyard philosophy. People are telling you that that please your flesh. When you are in your flesh, you are not pleasing to God. Go all the way back to creation again. Cain and Abel. It's, it's, so, it's, it's amazing how far <laughs> we think we are from creation and we and we can always find an account right there. Mm -hmm. Because one brother was operating in, in the flesh and one brother was operating in the spirit. And the brother that was operating in the flesh, read your Bible, God did not accept his offering, his sacrifice. He's not going to accept yours and mine if it's in the flesh. Right. We have to be born again of the spirit. The Bible says that which is flesh is flesh. And that which is spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say, you must be born again. We're talking about the less lust against the spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians, Ephesians, second chapter, third verse. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Paul oh, got another witness to the <laughs> Ephesians church. Listen, listen, and listen to what he's saying. Uh, born again. I, I know we can amen to this. He said, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past. That word conversation in the scripture means conduct. Cor course of life or course of living manner of living. We've all had our manner of living in the past. We've all had, we all conducted ourselves in the past by the lust of our flesh. He said, not only by the lust of our flesh, but fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of our mind. He said, and, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. <laughs> There's no way you and I, we cannot be fooled into thinking that we can operate in that nature and we're pleasing to God. We have to, that, we have to get that. We have to get that. That is part of the flesh. That is the pride of life. There's only three, there's only three aspects that function. The Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. And when we operate in the flesh, we operate in one of those categories. And just one of those categories puts us at odds with the spirit. Mm -hmm. Puts us at odds with the spirit. We're never justified. We're never justified mm -hmm. by the manifestation of the flesh. First John 2.16, this is the last verse that we're going to deal with on the worksheet. And then we're going to go back to uh, then we're going to go back to verse 19. What time? What time do you have? What's my time? That's clock not right. Five minutes. Huh? 45, 15 minutes. Uh, 1 John 645. Huh? 1 John 2.16 It's on the worksheet. 1 John 2.16 says For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but it is of the world. I'm gonna read that. Again. I'm gonna read that again because I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to help you get it. I'm trying to help you get it. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the 
pride of life. That started as early as creation. We just read that. Genesis, the third chapter, verse 6. It started in creation. That is why we fail. That is why we fail. Please hear me, hear me well. So if we fail operating in the flesh, how you think you're going to make it in by still operating in the flesh without the Holy Spirit? Uh, it's not going to happen. Stop fooling yourself. Don't outsmart. Stop outsmarting yourself. That's the problem with the world today. We we in the in the, in the first chapter in the first chapter of the book of Romans, Paul lets them know that the world through wisdom they know not God. World, world's wisdom, world's wisdom opposes God. The world through wisdom. They know not God. Mm -hmm. So if you're functioning or operating through the channels of worldly wisdom, mm -hmm. then guess where you are operating at? You are operating in the flesh. You're operating in uh, the earthly nature, the human nature. And that opposes the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read it again. 1 John 2.16 it says, for all that is in the world, we're talking about from creation to date, all that's in the world. Yes. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, it says, is not of the Father. That is not of God. Right. But it is of the world. It is of the world. Mm -hmm. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> He's, he's, he's trying to help. That's why he sends his word. And then sometimes the, the Lord sends his word to try to deliver us. And then sometimes we go sit and contemplate if we're going to believe the word or not. If I, if I ask a million dollar question as it pertains to this lesson, I would say that's, that, that's the lust of the flesh. But anyway, we're going to move off of that. Galatians. Galatians. Back to the fifth chapter of Galatians real fast, and then we're going to give it up. Galatians 5, verse 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, discivishness. We cannot operate in these characters. Right. This is your flesh. This is my flesh lusting against the spirit if I'm operating in this. Uh, verse 20. Idolatry. Okay. Witchcraft. For those of us that don't understand. Witchcraft is sorcery, is sorcery, is bewitching, attraction, or charm. <laughs> so when we try to flatter, when we <laughs> when we try to flatter, that's a form of witchcraft. There is no unrighteousness in God. Period. Listen, I'm gonna read it again. Witchcraft is sorcery. Is bewitching, attraction, or charm. Mm -hmm. Moving on down. Hatred. To harbor, to loathe, to mm -hmm. cherish, dislike to, to regard with less love. Mm -hmm. This is hatred. This is this is this is the flesh manifesting, and this is lusting against our spirit. Mm -hmm. This is lusting against our spirit. You want to know why? You're struggling. You want to know why I'm struggling. I'm not struggling with the man next door. I'm struggling with the man in the mirror. I'm, str I'm struggling with the, the lust of my flesh, which which I think I'm, which the sad part about it is I, I'm under the impression that I'm justifying it. Wow. Can't justify it. Can't, you can't justify it. We just read 
He condemned sin in the flesh. We have, we have the spirit of overcoming. He condemned sin in the flesh. So, I, like I said a minute ago, only thing you and I can do with sin is confess it and repent of it. Don't hide it. Don't do like Adam and Eve. Don't go hide from the presence of the Lord. Acknowledge it and stop it. Stop justifying it. Stop practicing it. That is your flesh. That is my flesh. That is not the spirit. The next one is variance. Variance is contentions, quarrels, dispute, not in agreement or accord. When we find out, and this is this is with the body of Christ. This is with the brothers and sisters. He says, contentions, quarrels, dispute, not in agreement or accord. Variance. When we are manifesting these works, we are operating in the lust of the flesh. When we when we can't get with one accord, listen, listen to him well. When we cannot get with one accord, no one is right. That's right. No one is right. Hallelujah. You have to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. Because your Bible and my Bible said, agree with your adversary quickly. And <laughs> so how do you have contentions and quarrels when your word tells you to agree with your adversary? And then and then you believe you're right. I'm trying to I'm trying to help you begin. Amen. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you, trying to help me, trying to help us all. Power of the Holy Ghost. Help me. Emulations. Emulations. Emulations is jealousies and envious dislike. Jealousies, envious dislike. This is part one. This is the lust of the flesh. This is the lust of the flesh. I'm naming off these characteristics are the lust of the flesh when we are operating in our human and earthly nature mm -hmm. apart from divine influence. This is how we operate. The Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If we sow to the flesh, we go, if we sow to the flesh, we're going to reap uh, of the flesh corruption. Mm -hmm. We're going to, yeah, all right. Strife. Mm -hmm. Strife says self ambition, the act of striving with another, mm -hmm. competition, Jesus. contention. Are you, are you in competition? Jesus. And think that that's it. If you in competition, Come that's on. the lust of the flesh. That's operating out of the flesh. God is not in no competition. God is not. God does not have you in competition with your brother and sister. Where did that come? Where did that doctrine come from? That is the lust of the flesh. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Seditions. Seditions is a dissensions, rebellion. Insurrection, mm. a standing apart. <laughs> when we are divided, mm. when we are standing apart, when we are rebellion, when, when we are in insurrection, <laughs> mm. like they was, was it last year, the year before, they were climbing up that White House wall? <laughs> they were coming. They were, right. they were, they, they was in dissension. They was coming. They was rebellion. And if we are operating like that against the church, come on, somebody. All right. Amen. The flesh lusts against the spirit. That is not of God. Mm -mm. Oh, Heresies. Heresies is a chosen course of thought and action. One's chosen opinion. Organized cliques. Oh. You got organized cliques? That's heresies. Because your organized cliques has chosen your own opinion versus the word of God. Operating in the lust of the flesh. Okay? It's unjustified. The Bible said it is not pleasing to God. 
But you keep doing it and justifying. Envying, ill will, malice, spite, strives to degrade others. Envy, envy, ill will, malice, spite, strives to degrade others. If that's what we're doing, <laughs> we're operating in the lust of the flesh. That is not the spirit. That is not pleasing with God. And the last one up before I give you up is uh, revelings. Revelings is excessive eating or gluttony, no carousing, riotous uh, procession. If you are if you are parade around <laughs> a procession, <laughs> if you are parading around, <laughs> that is. Revelings are excessive eating or gluttony or carousing or riotous uh, procession. You remember the prodigal son? You remember the prodigal son? The Bible said he ran off in, with riotous living. He was he was he was celebrating. He was partying. The Bible said he joined himself with a citizen of the world. And, and and they would, as they say, they would turned up. That's, re that's revenue. Excess. If we are excess, even in gluttony, if we excess in eating, if we're excess in any of it, yes. we are operating in the lust of the flesh. This is part one. Part two is the second half of verse uh, 17, where it says the spirit lust against the flesh. We pray that you would stay tuned and follow us. That way you can get the second half. Yes. Because uh, the Lord is sending his word. He's preparing us for his return. Mm -hmm. And the songwriter says, uh, the songwriter says, I have one goal in mind, and that's to meet him in the air. Yes. Yes. And so as it is always, I encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. We pray uh, we pray that the word of God would open your heart and mind and give you an understanding. Your flesh is lusting against the, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. this, is where, this is where you struggle with. You struggle with the law of sin in your memory. But by faith, if you submit it and you give it and you entrust it to the Lord, he can deliver us. Mm -hmm. Without his, without his, be gracious in heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for the visitation of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we have heard. We pray that you would open up our hearts and minds and our understanding. Search, us, search our hearts and minds. Father, give us the strength that we need to maintain Feel your word, Lord God. Give us. We know that you have condemned sin in the flesh. We know that sin has no more power and dominion over us, Lord God. We have to stop choosing one's opinion or electing to walk according to the lust of our flesh. I just had to do it. I just had to say it. We pray, Father, that you would move on us each and every, and each and every one according to your purpose, according to our will. About to our needs, I'm sorry, according to your will, according to our needs. And we praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.